Welcome back to Pure Math 030. This lesson is a continuation of what we did in the previous one, that is domain and range. And I'm going to be looking at how we can use the graphing calculator to solve domain and range problems. Okay, and I'm going to be using the TI-83+. Plus. If you have the TI-83 not plus, that's fine. If you have the TI-84, that's also fine, too. And I want to get the domain and range of y is equal to x squared plus 4x minus 5. Now, we can see that this is a quadratic equation because it's of the form y is equal to x squared. However, it's been translated, it's been moved around, so it won't be, um, you can't just tell by looking at the equation what the, what the range is going to be. So I'm now going to bring up the grapher, and uh, let's take a look at this. Some of you may not need instruction in this, but if you do, please watch carefully. So I just brought the calculator up over top of a, a Word document, so excuse all the background material on it, but it should work well enough. So your calculator should look something like this. So we turn it on, and we go up, and y is equal to and I don't really know what my range is on this one, but um, hopefully it'll be okay. I'll check that later. So I want to go y is equal to x squared, so I press the square key, plus, excuse my jerky motions on this, so for x minus 5, and then we graph get that quadratic. Okay, so we have that, and um, we now have to figure out what's going on with it. Now, the domain of this graph, we can recognize that it is all real numbers. And um, quadratics always go forever to the left and forever to the right. So it will be all real numbers. The problem is going to be the range. Now I'm going to do that all in a calculator right now and then I'm going to go back and have some of this drawn out. But um, we don't know where this low end point is right there and I want to find out what it is. Now you might be able to tell by inspection. You might be able to tell by using the table and some of the other features. But the most reliable one is to use the minimum feature. So to get that, I will go into the calculate menu, which means I press second function trace, which is calculate. And if you go to the screen, you can see minimum. So either go down to number three or press three and you are required to select a left boundary and a right boundary and so you use your cursors to do so so I move the left arrow over till I'm to the left of the minimum value because I want to find the lowest point on this curve so that I know what the smallest value is and I know that the range will be all the numbers above that so the left boundary I just make sure I'm to the left of the um, vertex of it you can't really see that well on the screen but it, you can pick anything, so now you can. It's right there. And I press Enter. And then for the right boundary, I move it over to the other side. It doesn't matter where exactly, as long as it's to the right of the minimum value that you're looking for. Press Enter again, and you get that. Now the guess, I'll just move it closer to where I think it is and press enter. And the minimum occurs at x equal negative 2 and the minimum value is y is equal to negative 9. So I know that my graph is going to be, uh, my range is going to be negative 9 and higher. So I'm now going to return back to some of the uh, previous information and, and remove the calculator. So here we are again. Now this is um, the graph that we had, not on the calculator, but it looks like that. And we have to find out the, the, the y-coordinate of the vertex. And I'll recap some of the steps. The minimum key in your calculator is found by pressing second trace. 
and then number three is the minimum. Now had this one been opening downwards, we would simply use the maximum feature instead. And set the left boundary anywhere to the left of the, of the uh, vertex or the bottom of it. You don't have to be right around it. As long as there's nothing in between, you're fine. So don't worry about that too much. Just put it somewhere. And then set the right boundary on the other side to it. And press Enter again. And then guess somewhere in the middle. And once you do that, your calculator will take care of it for you. And now let's get the domain range of this one. By the way, the previous question, I should say that the range is y is greater than or equal to negative 9. And all the fuss I neglected to put it there. Now here's another one. y is equal to x squared plus x minus 20 over x plus 5. Now this is a fairly complicated one because it's a rational function. Polynomial on top, polynomial on the bottom. And the trick to making this one work is to factor the numerator. And it does factor into x minus 5, or x minus 4 times x plus 5 over x plus 5. And you're probably thinking correctly that those x plus 5s will cancel. As you're doing that, you need to be aware that the restriction on the x variable is x cannot be equal to negative 5, so that we do not have the denominator equal to negative 5. It will then simplify to y is equal to x minus 4. So this really is a linear graph. But the fact that we have that restriction on the x matters. So x cannot be equal to negative 5. So we end up in a, with a situation where we get a linear graph, but it produces a point of discontinuity at x is equal to negative 5. Now this will not show up in your graph for too well. In fact, it will look just like a linear graph but it is not a linear graph. It, excuse me, it is a linear graph, but it's not a traditional one because we have this hole in the graph at negative 5, negative 9. So I'm going to pause this for a second and then I'm going to bring the calculator up again and then let's, let's look at it in more detail. So here we are again with the grapher. Um, to enter this expression be careful. I doubt if you have much trouble with this, but we need to use brackets. So I will open a bracket. Then x squared plus x minus 20. Close that bracket. So you need to get the entire expression in, a, in that bracket divided by open bracket and then the denominator which is x plus 5 close and now when we graph it there is our linear curve our linear graph so it looks pretty normal but in fact there is a point of discontinuity and we find that on the table key your table key is found above the graph so second function graph takes us into the table and as you scroll up or down when you get to x equal negative 5 we do get an error sign and that's what tells us that this is not a normal linear graph. Now I'm going to go back and uh, refer to the point of discontinuity because you're probably wondering well what is the y coordinate, coordinate for that? So here we are. Um, the graph would be like this. I just drew that as a whole at negative 5, negative 9, but we need to find out the y coordinate. And it's actually pretty simple. Um, first off, the domain is x cannot equal negative 5, but it's all other real numbers. The range, well, we substitute the x value negative 5 into the simplified expression because all we're trying to find out is what is the correspo corresponding value for y when x is negative 5. So negative 5 minus 4 
is negative 9. So that's how we get that. If you substituted the x equal negative 5 into the original expression, it wouldn't leave you with a meaningful expression because there's the denominator would be 0. And this would tell us that the range is y cannot equal negative 9, where y is every other real number. So that's how you handle these calculator problems. It always works, even for simple ones. You can run it into your calculator like that, or usually works as long as the graph isn't too complicated. I will um, assign some homework based on this, and that will be available on the calendar and also on the uh, content module. Thank you for your time.